Good morning everybody, good morning, Lizzie here um, and today we're going to um, do our Making It Monday so I know we're a little bit late for Making It Monday as it's Tuesday if you're watching this live uh, but don't fret, um, <laughs> it's me not you <laughs> uh, Right, so uh, Project 57 of Wally is the last the very last Making It Monday for 2021 and um, I'm I'm kind of sad but I'm kind of glad because I get to get two weeks off <laughs> I'm rather pleased about that well you know it gives me time to regroup and start thinking about what 2022 is going to do for us um, but anyway I'm really pleased to, to be here this morning good morning to everybody that's joining me um, it's so nice to have your company I'm going to be here for about 45 minutes making Wally going through it all and making sure that you're all very clear about how it's put together isn't it in actual fact it's really easy make lovely little make and although i've said um to you guys that um it could be for your vaccine cards which personally i find in useful it can be for whatever you want it to be so um just a word of warning any any chat about um vaccines etc etc i will delete because it's not about that it's about making wally um and is, there's no political um sort of siding with this at all none at all none at all it's just to make a lovely little wallet called wally so i hope uh, you enjoy making wally it's just such a nice easy make like i say it's making it monday 57 the last one of 2021 is that even possible and although we're at 57 you know we started actually the year before so in 2020 we started making it monday so from um a week week on week on saturday is it we're going to be in year two. Can you believe that? Will we ever run out of ideas? I don't know. <laughs> but we've got one or two lovely designers on board. And actually, the first design of Making It Monday for 2022 is our lovely Gemma Joy. So that's the first design that we can look forward to on the 10th of January. Yeah, I know it seems a long way off, but you know what, guys? I need to regroup, put my feet up and have a glass of sherry. And I'm sure you appreciate that. So we're going to get going. I've got a different camera angle today because I didn't want to do too much swapping about with cameras. Um, I just want to get my YouTube up so I can um, just have a look at that and make sure we're live in, in YouTube. I just I actually, yeah, we're fine. We're fine. That's good. And I can see that we're live there. That's lovely. Good. So we're going to get going. I've got all my bits and pieces cut out and um, ready to go. And like I said to you just, just a moment ago, this is going to be a slightly different angle to what we normally do. So um, there's our pattern for Wally. You have to forgive me for having my mouse there, but I do need it. Um, and it's a lovely, lovely make. And if we go into the pattern, um, there's no um, pattern pieces as such. Oh, this is the one I wanted. Uh, there's no pattern pieces as such. Um, it's all, you can read this off your screen. So a couple of good photos of how it looks on the inside and how it looks sort of on a side angle as well. So if you're not too sure. And when you look at the pattern on the, on the website, you see these other two photographs as well. So if you're not too sure um, what, it, what it looks like inside, it's really, really simple. And if I show you, I'll just pop this... I'm going to try and follow the patterns it is. You know, I say that and I very rarely do, but we'll give it a go. Um, here, if you have a look at it here, you'll see it. we're using um, like a, a vinyl. Now, I've got a proper... When I say proper, you know what I'm saying. It's a, it's an, it's a, an, a vinyl, especially for sewing. But um, uh, you need a soft vinyl, one that's quite malleable. Um, I couldn't find it anywhere easily to to give you a link um but i know that there is some about it's um i would say it's um about a millimeter thick so you could look for something that's a millimeter thick um you don't want anything crunchy you want it to be soft so it, you know you, the whole thing can be squidged about um somebody suggested acetate a little while back and um 
I think as long as you can stitch through it, it's not too brittle and acetate is probably going to be fine. We've got a popper on there as well. And actually I took great inspiration from uh, Mabel the Label that our wonderful Nicola made and created that you're all going to make for La La Land um, and get that uh, Kim kit. So don't don't forget to, to get your ticket for that because um, they are actually now starting to sell really quickly. Um, and if you make Mabel the Label, which is, let me just show you um, this one which was a couple of weeks ago now um, that if you make that and have that displayed on your bag somewhere then you will get a Kim kit sorry I'm not being very good today uh, you will get a Kim kit so so from that I got the inspiration to make Wally <laughs> you can see it's uh, similar in some ways because we've got the popper we've got the windows but we've also got the vinyl on this just to give us another sort of um, I don't know just a different way of doing things it's quite nice to do th some things differently good so I've got all my bits and pieces here and I've got a light fabric so we can hopefully see what I'm doing. I'll try and keep um, inside my little area here so you can see better. I've got my two pieces of vinyl which you'll probably have to cut down on the long sides and that's perfectly fine. There's a reason why they are slightly wider than you need and we'll talk about that when we get to it. I've got um, four um, pieces for my poppers. I've got a, an innie and an outie, a stud and a socket and two buttons and we need those. I've got my tab piece here, I've got my two pocket pieces there which have been stabilised with a, a, it's actually G700, it's Visalin G700, uh, Morning Jackie, Jackie and um, also um, Gemma and Catherine, I saw you all there, and my uh, lovely admin ladies. Um, so these two pockets have been stabilised with G700 which is a lightweight iron-on cotton stabiliser. It's really, really quite lovely and you should really get some in your stash. Um, it's it's lovely, really, you know, super. It's not too heavy, not too um, light. There's my outer piece. And again, I've got my uh, G700 on the back of that as well. My lining piece. Um, now all this fabric is from Higgs and Higgs, so if you want to, um, if, you, if you like the look of the fabric, it looks a bit green on screen but it's actually yellow, um, it's from Higgs and Higgs, so please go and look them up and support uh, support them, they're uh, like our local businesses aren't they? Um, very very important that we, uh, we support our local businesses. So um, the first thing we need to do is to put the one of the poppers on here, and what you're going to do is fold this in half so this is your outer piece you're folding it in half and getting a crease just there look and you can see straight away I've got my crease you're going to measure one inch in along that crease line and do yourself a dot there we go let's just hold it up so you can see the dot if I can get the right angle there we go and we're going to put one of the halves of the um, popper in there so just make a little hole. If you want a screw punch, there's one on my Amazon shop, which is the Hunky Dory version. This is the Threaders version, but the Hunky Dory version is almost identical. I think the only difference is the colour. Um, and then what we need to do is to put our popper on there. Now we need, um, the button goes on the wrong side. So don't forget that. The button goes on the wrong side. If I can hold it, there we go, you can see. And you just want to pick one of your halves. So I've picked the socket. It doesn't make a huge amount of difference. And if you push it down, I'll just get rid of those for the moment in case I lose them. Um, it doesn't really matter which half you use. And if you push it down, it actually secures it. It's not fixed, but it's secure. So I can just lift up my fabric and just pop the button in the dish and then squidge. Now what you're squidging is this little point that's in the center of your stud, of your of your snap I should say. And um, you're wanting to squidge that down as far as you can but be, be careful that you don't push it over to one side. If you push it over to one side, you'll have difficulty with your um, other half to actually push it in. It will go if you've got a little bit of brute force. <laughs> but you want to try and keep your um, 
tool upright if you can so it completely squashes it flat rather than going on the side thank you Jackie for putting my my shop on there give it a squidge now normally I would stand up to give myself some body weight to push that down it's not difficult there we go you can see what that looks like it's not difficult but you want to make sure that that center is quite flat if it doesn't go flat then put it back in the dish and squeeze again and, and hopefully you'll squeeze it down far enough so your other snap goes in there beautifully okay so that's one bit done the other bit we're going to do is the tab um, and if we look at the pattern we can see that with the next thing we do, if I do it that way, the next thing we do is the tab and then we're going to join our tab onto our outer piece. OK, so I shall follow the pattern. So if you follow along with me another time, you'll be able to see that quite easily. So with the tab, we're going to use our iron and our ironing mat. Do try and get one of these little mats. Uh, I don't think Abigail, Abigail has them on her site at the moment, but um, perhaps an email to her. She might perhaps get some in the new year. I don't know if she will or she won't, but it would be nice if we could have some. Thank you, Abigail. Um, <laughs> So I folded over one long edge a quarter of an inch. You can see what that looks like. And then all I'm doing now is folding it in half. And just to get myself a centre crease. There we go. And uh, for those people that said they've liked my um, necklace, I actually, I actually um, persuaded my sister that she needed to give it to me. <laughs> Let's put it that way. So now I've folded it in half. I've got my crease going down the centre and I'm just bringing my outer edges to the middle. So they just about meet. You don't really want them to overlap, but you want them to just about meet. Just maybe a little smidge a thread's width apart. So if I hold that up, you can see. And then we're going to fold that again. Gosh, my iron is so super hot. Um, one of the good things about this iron, it does get hot, but while it's while this fabric is hot, give it some memory and put a clip in there for it to cool down. And it really does help to keep your fabric in the right place. So there's our little, there's our little um, tab there. So what we're going to do is actually machine all the way around the edge and we're going to put the other half of the stud on there and then we're going to attach it to our outer piece. So if we bring in the machine, I can take my clip off now. It's so super hot, I can't tell you <laughs> how hot it is, gosh. Um, and then also the, also the other thing is if your little ends stick out, which sometimes they do, use your... Uh, your stiletto to poke those raw ends in because otherwise they're a little bit unsightly. So about, um, about an eighth of an inch um, around. So again I can use my stiletto to move things. I'm going to use my stiletto also to push those ends in so we don't see the raw edges. So I'll just push those in and then come around. And then I can move it again and you're almost hands free if you use a stiletto um, and again I think there's I think I've put one on my Amazon site as well so very useful very very useful so there's our little tab <laughs> and we're going to just put the other half of the um, snap on there so again let's just get my scissors just to neaten that off and my tool for making a hole. Don't forget, when you actually put your button on, it's got to go in the center. Uh, so let me see if I can lift that up. So, you, well, you can see it there, can't you? So don't put your hole near the edge, um, otherwise it won't be strong enough. Take it back, I suppose, about a half an inch. Let me just measure. Yeah, I'd say about a half an inch. No, no less than that, or well, perhaps three eighths is okay, but um, you just really want to, you know, keep it neat and keep it strong by going in a little bit. So you can see my hole there. So pop your button in. There we go. And pop your other half on top. 
like that and you can push that down and once again it, it stays put it's really good um, just use your nails to sort of push push the stud down and then what we're going to do is just use our tool again and just squidge that together there we go and again all we want to do is squidge that center point down so it's flat let's have a look oh that's beautiful <laughs> If, if, a, if a snap can be beautiful that's that is a beautiful snap and you can try it out on your piece if you want to um, before you commit and see how it fits and like I say that one was just slightly over but if you keep if you persevere at it and push it it will snap together and if it doesn't like mine's struggling a little bit this morning um, you could get a little hammer and give it a tap and that will push that plastic socket down so um, oh hi Brooke from Australia gosh that is um, is it it's evening for you isn't it yeah so so be aware of that because my first um, center point didn't go quite how I wanted it to go but sometimes these things don't but don't give up if that's what's happening to yours I want you to like I say just persevere and push it down because it will go it's only plastic so it's not wasted so that pops beautifully so now what we're going to do is actually place it if we look at if you look at the pattern and I'll bring it in so you can see this part here you've got the um, uh, tab this end with your um, socket showing and on this side you've got the socket you've got the other half so you want them both facing up now if you're, you're looking at this on your device um, uh, enlarge the screen so you can see exactly what I'm talking about because I use pink um, snaps so they don't show up very well but in actual fact just zoom in it's just it's you can get the perfect view and then what you're going to do is find the center of your outer so again give it a squidge and a press you're pretty much going to be okay finding the center of your your tab but do the same if you need to and then pop that down over the top and, and pop a pin in put two pins in if you want there's certainly two pins on my pattern and um, just so you can see what it looks like and we're just going to base that on so it stays together it just makes it really super easy and of course I'm going to take my pin out um, I start about half an inch before and I finish half about half an inch afterwards I don't measure but that's roughly what I do so you can see what that looks like now okay so from now on we're going to be drawing so I will draw and then I'll hold up so you can see exactly what I'm doing but that's our outer finish so I'll put that to one side with my lining so now we're going to start making our pockets. Um, let's get something dark so you can see. And we've got two, as I said before. So you've got two with the G700 facing you. And you want to draw on your fabric with the heat erasable pen, if you wish, five eighths of an inch in from the all four edges so we're going to go around the whole thing and it's five eighths of an inch now if you've got a pattern that says something different that's a that's a typo we uh, we discovered last night we had a typo um totally my fault <laughs> but um we we're doing this five eighths of an inch so as long as you can remember that um and uh, and uh, draw as i say then you'll be absolutely fine all is good so all the way around both pieces and I deliberately didn't do this beforehand so you can see me do it live and also you can also see how quickly this whole thing comes together. So now we've we've done that we're going to do crisscross lines in the center and on the pattern that is very clearly shown so I'll show you there there that's where we're at there so if I turn the page we'll be ready for the next bit. So you're going to crisscross across <laughs> so you're drawing from corner to corner and this is going to really help you with your 
with your cutting. And um, when I first did this, I thought, oh, I don't need, I don't need these lines. But actually, it really did help. So I would strongly suggest that you do the crisscrosses like this. There you go. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to cut on these lines on both pieces and we're going to go right into the point of that corner. So don't think, um, oh, I need to, you know, not do that. I want to make it nice and neat. No, I want you to go right into that corner as far as you can go without going over. So don't, um, don't stint on that. It's important. So um, you could get your rotary cutter in there and cut a lot of it on with a rotary cutter or you can just fold your fabric on the diagonal, pop your scissors in um, and just cut. And like I say, go right up to the corner. So you'll need some really good scissors. Um, I, I'm using my, my Karen Buckley, which are the bee's knees. If anybody's got Karen Buckley, you know what I'm talking about. So right up into the point. Don't worry if um, if the lines aren't brilliant. Uh, you know, and you, your cutting isn't brilliant. It's not important. So there we are. You've cut all those lines. So we'll do the same with this one. So fold it in half along the diagonal line, and then cut right up to the points in the corners. So you're going right in there. Let me just let me just show you what I mean by that. Look at that. And you're going to repeat it again on the other side and like I say don't worry if your cutting is not brilliant because you know what you're going to fold all this back you're not going to see any of it it's just there as an as a as a help to you really and in a minute we'll be cutting quite a bit of this back so there is our other piece cut so um, now we, what we need to do is to actually, um, to be honest, before you cut, it's probably easiest. It says that in the pattern. One of these long sides, so let me hold that so you can see. One of these long sides, I'm going to fold over a quarter of an inch and top stitch. And I'm going to do the same for both pieces. So I should do that now. So it's just bringing in the machine. I Don't put an iron on it because you'll lose all your lines that you've just stitched. So literally fold it over. I would I would do a guesstimate, but what all I can say is that you don't go up to the line that you've drawn because that's um, a wee bit bigger than than you need. So straight across the top. And for those that are curious about my machine, it hasn't gone back to the menders yet. Uh, I've been so so busy. Um, I haven't had time. Um, this poor little dukey here, um, <laughs> it's lost one of its sensors and all I can do is a very basic straight stitch. I mean, so basic, it only allows me three different options, um, which is tragic, but um, it's going to go back and get a new sensor put on it, but perhaps it might be between Christmas and New Year, or it might be in January, whenever I get a moment. So there we are. So you can see I've top stitched both pieces and to make it nice and neat. And then all we're going to do is fold these cut pieces over. And of course, like everything else, we're going, we've used a heat erasable pen. That's just so we know where we're cutting and where we're folding. And in actual fact, as soon as you put your iron on there, all those lines are going to go. But I don't want you to worry about it. Fold one of them back really well that first one your points go right up to the corners so you know exactly where you're cutting can you see what that looks like and then all of these are being folded back to their points so I'm kind of sort of stretching stretching it out so those points look gorgeous now be aware that you may well distort your rectangle a little bit when you do this Try not to. Um, when you come to put the vinyl on, it'll it'll come right as long as you keep it straight. But um, just be aware of that. So there's our little pocket, and if we look at the right side, it it just about looks like it's ready to go. <laughs> it's difficult to see, isn't it? Difficult to see. So again, just fold the next one, go right into the points, really work it. And, oh, my dad's trying to FaceTime me. Oh, he's so clever. 
<laughs> well, he is 93. <laughs> Thereabouts. Nearly, nearly 93. Oh, I'll have to ring him back. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so you're just pulling, pulling those points out so your corners are really, really neat. Um, and as you do it, you'll realise what I'm saying. You'll realise what I'm saying. So there's our second one done. If we look at the front, it doesn't look too bad, does it? If you can look, that's it, that's better. If I hide the points. So let's just get the iron out of the way. So what we're going to do is we're going to trim all these back now. Um, now with this, this one that overlaps your front top stitch seam, yeah, I want you to cut that back um, so it's well it's going to be less than a quarter of an inch but I don't want you to I want you to make it neat um, I want you to be aware that you don't want a raw edge sticking over the top of your your piece so if I hold it like that can you see the sort of size I'm talking about and then with these ones it doesn't matter so much but you're going to trim them down about a quarter inch yeah no bother oh I know why my, my dad's calling me. I always do his shopping list on a Tuesday and I suspect he's already getting anxious uh, anxious about it. But he should never worry because I always remember. And I usually go and see him on a, on a Tuesday, but um, today I'm not because I'm seeing him tomorrow. So, um, I don't, like I said, I don't want him to get anxious. Uh, so I will call him back as soon as I've finished doing this for you guys. So there's our two pieces cut and you can see the sort of width I've cut them down to. So they're not going to interfere with my seams going round. But as it's fabric and it's not going to be the vinyl, then it's going to be fine in the seams. Now with the... Um, Quilters tape, if you've got quilters tape, I highly recommend it because we're working with vinyl. I just want you to do the long sides. So if I pop that on my, it's difficult to do this and you see at the same time, but I'm going to top to put it on the two long sides and I'm going to take it right up to the folded edge. And I'm not going to take it much further on the sides. I just, the tape is there literally to hold the vinyl in place. It's, it's there to, to be my friend. <laughs> you can't pin vinyl and with this particular make it's going to be difficult to, to, to use clips. So um, just to use it on that long, those long two edges, and to be honest one edge would be fine, um, is, is just enough. So I'm sorry I'm faffing with this. It's getting it in the right place and it's still not quite as I'd where I'd want it. Let's just move it again. Just to, and, and um, quilter's tape is absolutely something you need in your workroom. Um, it's, it's not a cheat, it's, a, it's, a, it's an assistance. And I always say, you know what, it, when, when our, the, old, the older generation were making quilts hundreds and hundreds of years ago, if they could have got quilter's tape to stick some of their pieces down, you know what, I bet anything you like, they would have absolutely loved it. Um, yeah, I have a strange analogy for using modern things. I always say, if uh, if caveman could have radiators, do you not think they would do? So, although traditionally you're going to sit by a log fire and keep keep warm, um, if they had the choice, I'm sure they'd want radiators. <laughs> Which always sounds a bit weird, but that's my analogy for using gadgets and gizmos. So there's my tape. Top and bottom only, don't worry about these side pieces. It's just there to hold the vinyl in place while you stitch it down. If you find that the tape uh, sticks out, if, let's say, away from the vinyl, if it's, if it's not all being covered by the vinyl, um, please don't worry about it. You can, you can peel it away if you want to. You can get in there with your scissors and peel it away. Or, in it is wash away, although you, you don't really want to wash this, not particularly. Um, but it's, um, let's just get this in place while I'm chatting. It's actually, 
it's going to get dust on it and it's going to get fibres from the, the cards and bits and pieces you put in so I shouldn't worry. So can you see where I've placed the vinyl and if you need to trim this vinyl back then please do. By the time you've stitched it down it'll be, it'll be just perfect and you also want to stitch only an eighth of an inch from the 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 um the folded part of your frame so again i'm just popping this on top and all i'm doing is making sure those are folded back and then hey presto my vinyl is stuck down just on the two long sides let's do it so it's the right side for you um, and there and there okay and we've got this lovely window if i flash it super so i'm just going to pop that under the sewing machine like i said you want them um, to stitch i stitch with vinyl i stitch with the vinyl facing me so um, i suggest you don't stitch on the front because all that vinyl will stick to the bed of your machine um, you can use gadgets and gizmos to allow that vinyl not to stick you can use tissue paper you can use a vinyl foot you could even use talcum powder believe me i've tried everything um, but i find this the absolute best way my machine will take it and actually your machine will take it too if you put the vinyl facing you and to be honest because this is vinyl that's used for sewing it's kind of geared up for us and um, even making a bag I haven't had any problems using my regular foot um, sometimes I think manufacturers suggest these things because they want you to um, make a purchase whereas if you can make do without then you should absolutely make do without so I just trim my threads the trouble with going on the back with my machine is it does suck my threads down a little bit so there's my my first pocket done if i flash it you can see the vinyl inside and also can you see my stitching how close i've got to the to the edge of my the folded part okay so again i'm doing this on the um, wrong side and just stitching up well I would say it's a sixteenth of an inch to be honest um, oops, a bit wriggly there. Um, so you're not doing a great big seam you really are not and like I say once you stitch this on if you want to trim your vinyl back by all means do that to keep everything tidy and I'll just do a couple of stitches and that'll do me. It's not structural, it's purely just to put the vinyl in. So we'll just trim these ends. Um, like I say, my, my machine, it kind of sucks my thread down. I don't, I can't remember if it does that when I've got the, the regular plate on. I, I actually cannot remember. Seems ages since I used it. <laughs> so there's my second one there that you can see how lovely that looks lovely and neat beautiful job okay so now what we're going to do is actually attach our pockets to the lining so this is my my lining piece and we're going to put them on the right side now what I really strongly suggest is that you lay your pockets down so everything is right side up your lining is right side up your pocket is right side up but what I strongly suggest you do is to make sure you have a gap between the pockets. Now, all of this depends on your personal cutting, <laughs> how good you are, um, how much you turned over on the top there when you turned over and stitched. So um, it really does depend on that as to how big a gap that you have between the two. But I really want to make sure that you understand that you have that gap between the two pockets. Because when you come to fold it over, you want a little a bit like a book. You need a little bit of leeway. So we're going to base these pockets down onto the lining fabric, but I'm going to do one at a time. So I've seen that, I've visualised it, I can see that it's perfectly fine. If you think you need to make sure that it's sitting just a wee bit away from the middle, get your iron and give the centre of that lining a crease. 
okay you see that and then when you do place your pocket down you're going to place that a couple of millimeter away from that crease don't worry about what happens here if you're a little bit out you can always trim it that's what's important okay so I'm going to baste it I'm not going to increase my stitch um, I'm just going to pop it on you can pin this if you want to so I'm starting a wee bit away eighth of an inch and I'm just going around the outside of my pocket and lining together I'm just making sure I've got that lined up there we go now if you want to press any of this um, please press obviously on the non-vinyl side or if you have to press where the vinyl is then use a cloth so that's one pocket down just make sure it's lying flat okay and then now I'm going to introduce the the second pocket just get everything lined up there we go and go straight across down to the bottom Keep everything lined up. If your cutting is good, then everything will sit nicely on top of each other. You know, you, it's just absolute perfection. And we're back to where we started. Uh, Carolyn, I'm using a Juki. It's uh, the UX8. It's fabulous. Uh, even though mine is broken, <laughs> it is absolutely fabulous. If you, um, it's it's quite a bit of money, but if if you can't get that, then the, my other Juki, and I'm looking at it now, is the TL2200 QVP Mini. And by golly, that is the best machine ever. It doesn't do anything except straight stitch, but it's amazing. Right, so that's my pockets on. So now what we're going to do is go on to the next stage and I'm just going to fold over a quarter of an inch on one of these ends of my lining. So I'll give that a little press. Don't forget, you're not pressing the vinyl. So one of these ends, you're folding over a quarter of an inch. Um, there won't be much room, so I don't think you've got a load of fabric to play with, but you have got a quarter of an inch that you can fold in. So give that a press. Okay, so we're, I'm happy with that, you can see. And then with your um, outer fabric, you're going to um, press a quarter of an inch, but you're going to press it on the end with just the one um, snap. You're not going to do it on the end where the tab is. You're doing it on the end where the snap is because this is our turning gap and we want it to be easy. If we did it on the end with the tab is it, that is definitely not easy. Right, so that's our um, other end now folded over and pressed. Um, and all we're going to do now, so I was reading, there's a huge comment on there. <laughs> Is that from Sally? Sally says, working very hard listening at the same time, I found the most amazing button on Facebook. Up on the right hand, across from where it says Lizzie Curtis, there are three dots. Click on those and you have the option to save the video. Oh, it's true, Sally, it's true. <laughs> Actually, and that's much easier to do sometimes. So look, those are our two pieces now. So there's our lining piece with the pockets and there's our outer piece with the all the, the snap bits on. Both of these top ends have been folded over a quarter of an inch if I turn them round you'll be able to see that if I just there you can see that okay so we're doing right sides together just make sure you tuck your tab in your little tab wants will want to come out and what I want you to do is so from um, one of these folded edges here all the way around three sides you're not doing anything on that top edge yet and you're stitching with these folded now often I, I'll say open it up and then stitch but because this is a small project I want you to stitch with them folded it's just super easy it really is you'll, you'll notice how super easy it is when you come to do it um, and you're just going to make sure that you start and stop with those folded edges absolutely beautifully on top of each other okay you have got to watch your vinyl guys just watch your vinyl but just make sure that those two ends are sitting on top of each other beautifully. If you're out, then you need to readjust because that's the end that's important. Hi, Julie. 
<laughs> Finally, you caught me live. Well, it is quite early in the morning here in the UK. I've got so much to do. I thought, well, I'll get this done really quick. So you're going to go all the way around. Start here, go down, across and up. And I just want to make sure that you've got your folded edges sitting on top of each other beautifully. You're going to stitch them folded. You're going to start and stop with a back stitch. Um, and of course, I'm going to take my pin out straight away because that's what we do. We're using a quarter inch seam allowance. So one or two stitches, one or two stitches back. And then when I've got my needle in my fabric, I'm going to adjust everything, come down to the bottom, across the bottom, make sure all my corners are sitting on top of each other. and back up the other side. Take my pin out, don't ever stitch on pins. Now, when you come to do this bit here, okay, when you come back to here, what I'd like you to do is, if you've got a, a stiletto, and I must find my beautiful wooden one, um, I want you to hold your layers together. I want to use your, you to, I want you to use your stiletto as a, a holder, as a sort of a, it's, it's just, easier to use this than your hands and your fingers okay um, so I'm just going to literally keep that all together run up here as I say with my quarter inch and my stiletto is held there the whole time that means everything right so off we're going backwards and then we we'll cut the thread so everything is held in place beautifully and there we have the two pieces joined together. So just take off your corners, don't don't go crazy, just, just be careful with that. So you've got um, nice neat corners chopped off, yeah? And then we're just going to turn through. <clears throat> and although we've got the vinyl and the stabiliser and all those layers of fabric, just work it through try not to take too long on it because the vinyl could um, crease mine never does but i kind of have to give you that little bit of warning just in case and then push your uh, corners out get so far and then we'll get a pokey tool to, to finish the, the corners off so just that's it it's just I love the colour I love the I love yellow I love yellow January in the um, in the gold group if you're part of the gold group is um, yellow because it represents daffodils for me that's the best time so apart from being a little bit creased up because obviously we just turned it through we're finished all we're going to do now is top stitch these two edges together and because we've already folded over that quarter inch it actually goes together beautifully so I'll just pop that under my machine and it, I mean it's like I say it's already folded so a couple of stitches I'm going going I'm gonna go back <laughs> if I can get my teeth in and then start again use your stiletto uh, to hold all your layers together tuck any bits in that are being willful also hold it to to so you can see that my folded edges are sitting together beautifully but the stiletto's doing that and it's easier to do it with that than my hands so all the way along and this is the only edge you're top stitching you are absolutely not going to be top stitching anywhere else so you know just go by what the pattern says the pattern says do not top stitch anywhere else otherwise you won't be able to get your credit credit cards or your vaccine cards in there so just use your stiletto just to poke those ends in, get a really good finish. Go right up to the end, do a back stitch, and then cut your threads. There we go. So that is our little wallet made. Um, I've got uh, a bit of bird nesting going on, but it actually it isn't actually my uh, my. Um, uh, 
my machine that does that, sorry. I was thinking of what I was going to do next. So I'm going to actually press this. Normally I wouldn't do this on a on a live, but we've, we've got plenty of time. I don't want to take up any more of your valuable time by doing this, but it would be, it's interesting to see. Now you can use Best Press, or if you can get hold of this, um, then that, that is brilliant as well. It's a starch, so it makes it really lovely and crispy. And it just gives it a lovely finish. So let's and make sure your iron is clean if you're using light fabric. Because of the damp, it'll the, all, all the muck of your iron will come off. So make sure your iron is clean. And just go around your studs. Don't go over your studs. Be sensible. Give that a really good press. Okay. And then fold it in half like that and give it another press. Use a damp cloth if you want to and job done. All we need to do is pop our cards in there. So I've got a sticky finger that's holding on to me. I'm, I'm going to get a little hammer on that just to make sure that goes in. But anyway that's that's our Wally made with a popper and two pockets. Now obviously you can put your, your vaccine cards in there. Let's not get political, um, but you can. Or you could use your credit cards. Or I'll tell you what, I, what I'll do I'll, on this one, I'll be using for my the uh, cards that I need to go when I go motorhoming to the different sites that need to, you need your, your proof of uh, who you are. And that's for the, the Caravan and Motor Club, Motor Motorhome Club. So there we are. So that's Wally, a lovely, lovely, easy make. Um, the pattern is there for you to download. Um, don't forget, if you've got an older pattern that says uh, three eighths of an inch, you're actually going to change it to five eighths of an inch, or you can just download um, another pattern. They are free until Friday. So of course, you're very welcome to go ahead and, and download another one. It's perfectly fine to do that. I don't mind. <laughs> So there we are. So there's our two little wallies. And now, you know, I said about popping um, a hammer on that. Um, I, it's either that or you can squidge it, but it, it, it will go. It, trust me, I've, I've worked with snaps for, for years um, and they can be fickle little monsters. <laughs> So there we are. That's the two wallies made. I'm glad you could have joined me for this. Um, and what I want to say is this. Don't forget, we're not back until the 10th of January. I've got a couple of weeks off. The first pattern is with our Gemma Joy. She's designed that for us and it's all ready to go. Um, so I'm very excited about that. Um, and um, what I'd like to do is thank you very much for your support uh, all through 2021. You've all been amazing watching me every week, week in, week out, with hundreds of people sometimes watching, which is which is really marvellous. It, it brings me great joy. And um, I wish you all a very, very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And uh, stay safe, eat loads, drink a little bit and go out for a nice walk every now and again to get some fresh air. <laughs> and then come back for more, more chocolates, uh, another little glass of sherry. So... Uh, Best wishes to you all. Have a lovely um, time over the festive period. If you're watching this in next July and you wonder what on earth I'm talking about, this is the 21st of December 2021. So hence the uh, sparkly lights and the twinkly necklace. So bye bye, everybody. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and I will see you all again another time. Bye.